Yes. <laughs> Finally, want to welcome our last speaker, Richard, who actually introduced Elise Ann for the purposes of this. Um, Richard was recommended by a previous speaker. So if a speaker recommends someone else, they have to be someone who is courageous and candid and willing to speak really openly um, and taking a lot of risks in their life. So I look forward to hearing more about that. Please welcome Richard, or Rich. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for that. Guys and girls, I came up here, I'm freaked out. I'm like, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up. <laughs> Fucked up already. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but I want to talk about life today because life isn't fucking easy, is it? Yeah? Would you agree? It's not easy. And I want to share with you a bit about my story and how many times I fucked up, multiple times. But the truth is, before that, I want to do a bit of an introduction of who I am, because I'm sure, you know, if you guys didn't check out who Elise Ann is, I'm sure you didn't check me out, because I'm not the hottest thing on that page. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, who am I? I'm, I'm just a guy called Richard Fu from Australia, Sydney, look Singaporean, speak really funny. <laughs> I'm an international best-selling author. I've had my own podcast show, where we've had some amazing people like... The guy who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus, Dr. John Gray, we had John Martini from The Secret on there, for the Australians in the room, if you know The Biggest Loser, we had Commando Steve on the show, and a bunch more others, and you know, I've been featured in a few magazines, blogs, online things, but I want to talk about how I actually got here at first, because it wasn't always like this. My life wasn't always made perfect in this way. You know. Honestly, the first thing that I fucked up in my life was spending eight years in a corporate job that I totally hated. And sorry if you're in a corporate job and you love it, that's cool. <laughs> but if I told you for eight years, actually before that, you guys all have passwords. Yeah, you all use passwords. Yeah. My job in my corporate job was to actually go around and say, Keith, your passwords are only five letters long. The policy says you need six, you need to change that. <laughs> and I had to do that with a straight smile and actually be really happy about it and know that it really means a lot. And that's my job. I wanted to shoot myself in the face every fucking day. Could you, can you imagine that, right? Having to tell someone your passwords are not long enough. Every day for eight years, that's what I did. I hated it. I hated it. And I knew that there was something else out there. There's something I had to do. Something that had to have more impact in the world. And so what did I do? I started a really shitty website. <laughs> and what was it about? About dating. About love. Because shit, I was single, so I was looking for love. And I thought I could tell other people how to have love. That's what I thought it was. You can still actually find the website, so if you're interested, come find me afterwards. Uh, so that's the website. That's not what it looks like today, but it looks more shitter than that. And, and of course, if you, if you start your own online business, you probably did this too. I got my own ebook. Make sure you get a copy as well. Actually, don't it's shit. It's shit, right? Don't do it. <laughs> so that's my, my my second fuck up was starting a dating blog. And get this, I was like the shittest at English in high school. Yeah, you can tell it right now by the way I speak. I'm like crap. You know? And so imagine me writing. And I did that for two years straight, grinding my head against the wall, thinking, fuck, I gotta write another date. And then oh I gotta find another girl to go take on a date so I can write about it. <laughs> And for two years I worked on that and tried to make that happen. And I failed utterly. And so what, I, what, did, what does a person who writes about love try and do next? I try to go out and be a dating coach. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the only way to go. The only way to go. I had to go and be the Asian hitch. You know? I had to be that guy. I wasn't trying to be that guy, but everyone thought I was him. You know? And I went out there and I tried to be a dating coach for a year and a half. I'd be doing things like this, standing up in front of the stage, teaching love, and still being single, and teaching love, and showing how to actually go talk to girls. Right? That's what I was doing for one and a half years. So I spent three and a half years in this industry trying to make something work that never worked. That never worked. And it wasn't until I actually went in and pivoted. I pivoted, and if you're in business, just like Keith, 
talked about before. He had to pivot. Granted, I beat him to it. You know, it took him four years, and I did. I took three and a half. But I pivoted, and I started doing a virtual summit. A virtual like imagine where you get all these speakers, and you can just sit on your computer and watch the interviews with them. And I, in my very first interview, when I did this pivot, was that guy John Gray, the guy who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus. And I was shitting my pants, right, when he was about to get on the call. I'm like, I don't know what to say. But the big fuck up here was that I took too long to pivot. And this is what I want to put out there to you. How many of you guys are holding on to something, right? Staying in a relationship that's not working, right? <laughs> he knows it, he knows it, yeah? right? In a business that's not, that's not making money. A business that's not making money. And so after I did this, literally right after the summit finished, we opened up a coaching program because that's what I was doing. That's what I was good at. And this coaching program made the same amount of money one month after we finished as it took three years for my dating business to make that amount of money. And I sat there and I'm like, fuck, what's going on? Yeah, but I still love that first business because it's like my baby, you know? And so I'm trying to juggle two businesses at once. And this was the fourth fuck up of mine is that I held on to both, not willing to let go. Some of the people in this room already know my story. Some of them already have seen this journey happen, you know? But for me, it wasn't until I realized my coach sat me down like, Richard, it took you three years to make the same amount of money that it took this other business one month. Why the hell are you still doing that dating business? doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. And we've got to put ourselves in that situation too. But, you know, this was a real big fuck up. So I quit my job. I went all in on this and I came to Singapore. This is why I'm here, to talk about my fuck ups. Yeah? But not only that, I came here to run that. Then what happened, and I've only been here for six weeks, my mentor came over and he fucked me over. <laughs> yeah? In a good way. In a good way. Because he fucked me over because he did just one thing. He told me about the one thing. This book. How many of you guys have read this book before? Awesome, you gotta get a copy. Don't worry, it's not my book, so I'm not selling anything. Yeah? This is by Gary Keller. And when he talked about this, my coach sat there and said, you know Richard, if you, we all just did what we were really meant to do, just the one thing that really mattered, that you were really gifted at, and didn't worry about everything else, what would your life look like? What would your life look like? And I thought about it. And he asked me, what's your one thing? What's the one thing you would do? And I sat there, I'm like, shit. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> and so I want to talk about this one thing here. Because it's so important. It's so important for you guys to pay attention here. Because everyone thinks that you have one thing that you're good at, and everything else you do is shit. Yeah? I'm going to tell you that's not the truth. The truth is this. You have one thing that you're really good at, that's what we call your genius. Things that just happen to you, they just flow. That just happens. Then outside of that, we think everything else is shit, but the truth is this. When you step out of your genius, you actually have things that you are excellent at. You're excellent at it because you're trained up in it. You're trained up to be excellent. And if you're not excellent at it, then you're just probably great at it. Pretty great at it. And if you're not great at it, you're good at it. And if you're not good at it, you're average, yeah? And if you're not average, you're just shit house. <laughs> and there's multiple levels of shit house, but I'm not going to go into that. And the real thing here is this, is that my coach, when he sat me down, he said this to me, he looked at me, he said, Richard, you know, a lot of us are sold this lie of being a speaker. A lot of us are sold this lie that we're meant to be in the star of the business. A lot of us are sold this lie that you're meant to be a coach. And we all buy into it because it looks freaking awesome. But the truth is, if you just follow the one thing you're good at, the genius that you're good at, how would that be different? How would that be different? Because this is the thing here. You know, I'm shithouse at a lot of things. I'm average at a lot of things. I'm great at being a coach. I'm excellent at being... I don't know, a speaker, I think I am anyway. And this is because I'm more trained up. Things here, I spent five years doing this, training myself up, investing thousands of dollars to be here to train myself to this level. But it's not the thing that I'm really good at. It's not my genius. And this is the truth because I've been, I've, I was sold into this dream of being a speaker, being a coach. And so the thing that I'm really good at 
my genius is looking at whiteboards. I right? stirring the fuck out of that, like, yes! Uh, and in that pose, but no, what I'm really good at is I am amazing at systemizing. I look at people do things, I look at businesses create things, run their processes, and I identify where the wastage is. I do this for myself. You know, I spent hours looking for a new calendar app because the calendar app I'm using right now is going to get terminated in the next month. And I just want to find another one that's even better. That's how crazy I am. Yeah? And that's what our new business is, is that it's called the Ultimate Freedom Systems where I actually teach. Actually, I don't even teach it. I come in and I'll be the COO for solopreneurs who are caught up in their business, who just start creating a business, being self-employed, doing everything that they shouldn't be doing. And I just want to free them. I want to take away the admin. I want to take away them doing invoicing. I want to take away client onboarding so that they can stay in sales. They can stay in client fulfillment. They can stay in coaching and do what they love. And that's what I get to do now. I've realized that is my one thing. And so as we wrap up here, I want to ask you a question. Probably more questions because I know you guys are going to ask me a few. <laughs> is this. If you had all the money in the world, if... You had all the money in the world and you had all the material things in the world. You had all the houses, all the condos, all the cars, all of the planes, all the boats. Your family was taken care of. You didn't have to worry about them. You could travel anywhere in the world and you could live anywhere in the world. And you've done all of that. What would you do then? What would you do after that? After all of that, you created all the charities that you wanted to do. What would you do then? Because this is the thing is... What is the, your one thing? What's the one thing you would still do even after having all of that? What is that one thing? And that's what I want to share with you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for listening. something that like we can't be too certain of what we actually well, what's our one thing so how do you go about go on about finding out that you are really good in systematics and stuff like that? that's a great question in case you guys can't hear that he was saying you know how do we actually find out what that one thing and actually stick to it and go with it is that your question man yeah great question um i say this because my knees are like shaking because <laughs> even i don't know i really don't know this is my one thing i really don't this i'm pretty sure it's like if I said my one thing was a 100 meter sprint, but Usain Bolt's out there as well, I'm sure there's other people that are better, if not just the same as me. And that's okay. That's okay if it is. Right? But this is the thing. What if you went in on that one thing and you realized it wasn't? And you fucked up on it and then it led on to something else? Right? Did that help, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah good question, man. Yeah. Very good question. Awesome. I saw there was another hand over there somewhere. I'm just saying things. <laughs> What's Shimli? What's Shimli? Yeah. Oh, this guy, this guy's got like good, deep, good eyes, huh? Let me have a. So. Man, why you make me do this? So. <laughs> Keith noticed. Where is it, man? Out here. Yeah. S H M I L Y. That's me with really bad English, I told you. But it stood for see how much I love you. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a story, it's not even my story, right? It's this 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 like um, you know two two you know like grand grandparents, right? Not my grandparents, I read this somewhere and I stole it. And so basically they had that. Every time they would write it on little things, on toilet paper rolls so that their partner could see it, they'd hide it in cards and they just it's a sign so that they would let each other know that they're loved. And that's, what not, that's why I, I did what I did because not, there's not enough of that in this world. You know? We're too caught up in our own shit that we forget to let other people know how much we love them. Right? So, good question, man. Is the website still like? Yeah, man. Romanticmissions.com. You can go get, go get some. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Did you say that you were letting go of this business? What happened? 
Yeah, so <laughs> when, when it's actually really letting go, you're supposed to let the website die. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I totally missed that point because Bluehost automatically renewed it for another three years. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> fucked up there. But I leave it up because I want, I want it up there as a, as a token of like history of just where I've been. Mm -hmm. You know, the crazy shit that I've done, the stupid shit that I've done. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, if people look at it and go, well, who's this Richard Food guy? What's this stupid website? It doesn't do anything with this. It's okay. You know, it's just part of my journey. I'm not afraid to hide from it. I want it out there so that, you know, no one can turn around and try and blackmail me. Like, dude, it was already out there 10 years ago. So, <laughs> no big deal. So, good question. You yeah. this job. What would you do next? <laughs> the, the, the business I'm running right now? If I fucked up in this business right now, what would I do? Uh, what would I do? <laughs> uh, if I fucked up in this job, I don't know what I would do. And this being the honest truth is if I didn't know, I'd have a plan B. And that's a bullshit way of living. It's a bullshit way of running business because you're not all in on what you're doing. And so I don't know what's going to happen. I could go back to that password job and, and go say to do that again. <laughs> And that is the reason why I quit my job, because I know 100% I can go back to it. And I'm not scared of that. If it does, who gives a shit? You know, all right, I, I, I went out, I, got, I went for it. Didn't work, okay, I know it didn't work, and that's okay. But, you know, I go all in knowing that whatever's going to happen, I don't know how it's going to turn out, I'll be fine. And this is the thing that's missing a lot from the world, is that we don't have enough faith in ourselves to go and do what it is that we want, even if it scares the shit out of us, even if we're going to fuck up. That's a real truth. Great question. It seems like you have a hard time letting go of things. I mean, eight years in the first job, and then like <laughs> this for what, three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else beyond work that you found very hard to let go? Oh, why would we go here? <laughs> so the question was, I seem like I like to cling on to things, right, for a bit long, because right? it just doesn't work that way. And what else do I cling on to? And I'll, I'll be honest here, the, one of the talks I do here in Singapore is about you know, my week from hell where I caught off my wedding and two days later I quit my corporate job and then three days after that I find my first assistant in my business. And I cling on to things like shit house and I hate that. I hate that the most about me. That I hold on to things so long that I don't let go quicker. Because I don't let go sooner, then I feel like I miss out. But at the same time, I'm just learning. Like first, you know, eight years, and then you count it down eight years, three and a half years. Then like the ultimate man business is like a year, and I just keep getting better at it. You know, I realize my mistake, and I keep getting better at it, and and fixing and tweaking. That's what the truth is. Is that life is like, you know, actually, if you go to NASA and you actually watch them launch a rocket to the moon. The rocket, I don't know if you guys know this, don't quote me on the numbers, but the rocket is 80 to 90% of the time not on the right path. It's like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, and then yeah, it's not on the right path. And this is exactly what life is. We're always tweaking. We're always tweaking. And to your question, man, is that if this turns out not to, not to be the, the, the one thing, it's all right. I mean, I'm just going here and then, oh fuck, not right. Then come back, come back and that's it. <laughs> And that's really what I get to do. And if, if we all just did that, then where could we be? You know, I'm only 30 now. Right? If I just keep doing this, I'm just going to get quicker in learning how to let go of things. You know? mm -hmm. And this guy here is doing the mathematics because I know he's an accountant <laughs> in disguise over here. But I was doing this, this, the business, just to let you know, on the side. Right? All the business mm -hmm. time is on the side. So I was side hustling like shit. So that's why I could quit my job and actually come here because I built that from being creating a side hustle. Just to answer your question because I, I can read your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question over there as well. Last yeah. one. Uh, just wondering, like, when you fucked up, like, what, what motivates you to continue and what motivates you to continue to do your business? Or, you know, what pushes you day to day? So the question was, what motivates me to keep going even if I fuck up? Right? It's to never go back in that corporate boardroom and say, your password's too short. <laughs> no, no, no. The truth is, what keeps me going is, is knowing that I'm meant to some, for something bigger. That inside me, the whole time I was in the corporate world, the whole time I was doing the dating thing, 
you know, I was in a cage. We're all, all of us inside, as long as our heart beats, we always want freedom. We want freedom, financial freedom, you know, freedom to love who we, who we want to, freedom to go live wherever we want to. But most of the time we put it in a cage. And for me, I was like a tiger in a cage. And I held that in. So each time I come out, I realize I'm in another cage, and then in another cage, and in another cage. And so for me, the drive is to realize that the free, as long as my heart beats, I just want freedom. Freedom to be who I am. And so what I do every day is tap into that to learn and actually just continue being more of who I am every day, whatever that looks like, no matter how many times I mess up. And, and fail in trying to sell things or trying to do shit that's outside my genius is to just continue just knowing and being more of me every day. If I could just do that, then I've done an amazing job. Is it short? I mean, I mean you, you see my very focused individual, which is extremely uh, is a good thing, very driven. But I think it's also, do you think it's a little bit of a concern to, to think of, you know, I should just chase at one thing, uh, regardless of what happens, yes, fuck up. I mean, I'm gonna backtrack a bit. I still chase to the extent that it could be detrimental. Because mm -hmm. again, they become this delusional. I think it might be easy to to think of yourself and try to do what you want to do if you're single and you don't have responsibilities. But when you have uh, kids or a wife or a, a mom, then I think your fuck up can kind of cause them to fuck up even more. Stuff. Mm. So I guess where, where, where do you see where do you draw a line and be rational instead of just chasing or for a new shop? Very great question. So the question was, you know, where do I actually draw the line where instead of just chasing my pursuits, right, and fucking everyone else up? That matters to me. Yeah, that's your question. So it's a great question. And the honest truth is this, is that, man, uh, my corporate job, yes, I was looking at passwords, but I was actually in internal audit. I'm the most the most risk adverse guy in the whole company. Yeah, I hated risk. And so, you know, I understand where you're coming from is that we all have different situations. Like I have obligations back at home. I have a property portfolio that I need to look after. And you know, I, I can't go out and not make money because I have to pay for that. Yeah, and so the way to do that is to do exactly this. If you want to create a business, and I know most of you guys are, because that's why you're here at the hub, is that, you know, you have to do that side hustle. You don't just quit your job in pure like rage and, and frustration that you hate it and then you think I'm gonna go do something else. You have to create something on the side and have it proven. That is the most important thing. That's how you know when to let go and when to hang on. When you do something and it's proven. So you saw me that that whiteboard, right? I literally drew that up in one week and then a client walked in, looked at it and said, Richard, what's that? And I explained it and literally on the spot, that day she said, I want that, how much is that? <laughs> that's when you know shit's proven, yeah? When someone wants to pay for something, and that's when you know that it's, it's time to go in. And you go in on it because someone else knows the value of it, not just you bullshitting it, not you just lying about it. You know there's real value in there. And when you know there's real value in there, you have to also make sure you produce that. So I quit my job, I, had, I was on a six-figure income in Australia. And my the ultimate man, that was earning half of it. Yeah, earning half. So, you know, 50% of that six-figure income. And so when my coaches said, Richard, it's time to quit and go for it, I was scared shitless. I didn't even want to do it. I wanted it to replace my whole income mm. before I did that. So that's why I'm not, you know, it's not about being irresponsible. It's about being responsible. That's why you create on the side. If you create on the side, you can test it and can prove it. So I was testing for four to five years to find something that worked until I finally found something that worked. And it's the scariest thing now to fuck up on that. And when I say fuck up on that, is to start letting that go and going into something bigger. But doing that, it creates a space. Because if you hang on to too many things for fear of missing out, you miss out on everything. Yeah, you see everything, you're like, oh, look at that new business, look at that new investment idea, look at that new thing. You try to hang on to all of them, then there's no space for you to actually explode into one thing that you're really good at. So I hope that answered your question then. Thank you very much, Rich.